Congressman Morgan McGarvey represents Kentucky's 3rd District, which includes Louisville. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. We do appreciate you being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I understand, Congressman, that, that you knew one of the victims, Tommy Elliott, and, and had known him for years. So I wanted to go ahead and start right here by, by offering uh, our condolences uh, and to let you know that we're extremely sorry for your loss. I do want to ask you how this has impacted you, how this has affected your community, and what it now means to you in terms of taking action. Yeah, this this is awful. Um, it, it's devastating. It, it's, you know, when we first got the news, you got that feeling of dread in your stomach that this was different, it was wrong, and, and then we found out it was a harsh shoot, a mass shooting, and then you start getting the names, and, and of course, this is Louisville. So people shouldn't be surprised that we know them. What, what I want people to know about Louisville is that we are the smallest big city in America. I, I call it Louisville Village. We really are one degree of separation away from everybody. When, when we say, where'd you go to school? We mean, where'd you go to high school? And I've known Tommy Elliott for years because we're one degree of separation away from everybody. My wife worked with his wife for a little time here in Louisville. Um, several of the other victims if I didn't know them, I have really good friends who were good friends of theirs as well, because that's who we are as a community. And and so because of that, of that community we have that's so tight and so close, this is going to be really, really hard. But I hope also that, that that closeness keeps us together and that we will be putting our arms around each other and lifting each other up uh, once the national news has, has moved on that we're going to be here to help each other out for the, the weeks, months, and years to come. Again, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the gun used here because police have announced that the shooter legally bought this gun. It was an AR-15. Uh, he did so a week ago. And the AR-15 is, is a weapon that's been used multiple times, multiple mass shootings. It was used in Uvalde, Texas. It was just recently used in Nashville in the Covenant school shooting. It's been used to, 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 to murder children, small children. You serve on the Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. Congressman, what do you think should be done here? Can anything be done? We have to do something. Uh, because, look, I'm a person of faith, and if you're a person of faith, we do appreciate your prayers. We need them. Our community's hurting. But we've got to start having a policy conversation about what we can do to keep this from happening again. The AR-15 rifle that is used in this, which has been used in so many shootings, accounted for almost 25% of gun sales last year. It is a weapon of war. Uh, and we don't need weapons of war on our streets that are killing our people where they work, where they go see movies, where they play, where our kids go to school. And I think that we have to come together Democrats and Republicans and have an honest conversation about the damage this is doing to our country and to our communities. Yes, five people in Louisville lost their lives because they were shot with an AR-15. But the collateral damage is so much more than that. Um, from the police officers who bravely saved lives, ran into the hail of gunfire, one of whom was in his fourth shift ever as a police officer following his field training officer shot in the head with an AR-15. He is still fighting right now. Um, all the people who've responded to the scene, all the people who've taken care of him, the doctor this morning at the press conference who just almost broke down and said, I'm weary. My team is weary. We deal with this type of trauma far too often. Well, we need to step in on the policy side and limit this trauma, limit the collateral damage, try to help keep this from happening in a country where it's almost a unique occurrence. There was an, an assault weapons ban, a federal assault weapons ban, and it expired in 2004. It lapsed. Uh, it did show to be effective in reducing gun violence in the United States. What happened here? Why do you think it lapsed? Should it be reinstated? And is there a chance that it ever will be? Uh, I think I think we should make sure that we reinstate this and take weapons of war off of our street. I think we also have to do more. I think we need universal background checks. I think we need to address the mental health crisis in this country and recognize that there are people who are suffering. We've got to get more mental health supports out there and also have laws that help support the mental health 
like an extreme risk protection order or a crisis aversion rights retention law like I introduced in the state Senate when I was there in Kentucky, that, you know, for people who are in crisis, who are in imminent danger of hurting themselves or someone else, that we give law enforcement the tools they need to temporarily remove a firearm, therefore keeping someone safe. And will it prevent everything? Not necessarily, but you know, it might prevent a mass shooting. It also might prevent the leading cause of gun death in this country, which is death by suicide. So I, I think we've got to come together, recognize that there are things we can and should do to keep people safe. Don't make this political, make this about policy. Put people's lives first, put public safety first, put people and kids over guns. I want to go ahead and focus on policy for just a second though, Congressman, and talk specifically about gun laws in the state of Kentucky. For from what I understand, the state has the 13th highest rate of gun violence in America. And I do understand that laws have recently passed relaxing gun restrictions in your state. And they passed days before this shooting occurred. What do you have to say about that? No, I, I, again, look, I mean, we had a state legislature that was more focused on banning books and pronouns uh, and then also passed Kentucky to make it a sanctuary state for weapons. I, I think that there is more we can do and we, we've got to come together and do it. I think there's a state response. There are state and local laws that can and should be changed. For example, right now under Kentucky law, the weapon that was used in this awful, awful tragedy can be sold back through auction and be put back on the streets. Uh, that, that's unfathomable and it's unacceptable. Uh, so there's state and local laws that can change. And on the federal law, I think we need to do it too. For instance, if we're going to take weapons of war off of our streets, that needs to be a federal response. I'm sitting here in my district office in Louisville right now. I just came from City Hall. Uh, we are right across the river from another state. Uh, and so, you know, people could cross back and forth every day um, to go shopping or to go to work uh, both directions. And so that's where I think a federal law is also necessary. But do you believe, Congressman, because I know you're a Democrat and it's obvious to me where you stand on this issue. But what about Republicans? What about your Republican colleagues? Do you believe that there's a real chance for bipartisanship on this issue? And do you have confidence? Do you have confidence that things will change? Look, I do. I am optimistic. I'm always going to be optimistic. I served in the minority every single day I was in the state Senate. I was minority leader of the state Senate for the last four years before getting elected to Congress. I worked daily with my colleagues on some really big things to try and make progress, even on the extreme risk protection order type law, the crisis aversion rights retention law I mentioned earlier. I worked with a constituent of mine who'd been shot 12 times in a mass shooting in Cincinnati but survived. I got a rural Republican lawmaker to come on as my co-sponsor, recognizing we've got to bring sides together to make this a solution that is for the American people that keeps our people safe. It's not a political issue. This public safety shouldn't be a political issue. Let's not make it one, but let's come up with the solutions that actually can work. Put the policies in place that give law enforcement the tools they need to make sure we are safe. Kentucky Congressman Morgan McGarvey from Louisville. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today. Again, my, my deepest condolences. Thank you very much. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, school administrators reporting a rise in